a great human interest story. You know, at, at its core, you have a, a guy who wants to open up a restaurant in a community that not only doesn't have a restaurant, doesn't have things that people take for granted. What would that say about the town in general that something like this could, could happen? Braddock was the Silicon Valley of its day. They couldn't build the houses fast enough. There was so much different commerce and options for movies, banks, car dealerships, breweries, department stores. And to go from that extreme to where we're at now, it's really just unprecedented. For years after Katrina, I compared the Ninth Ward to Braddock. It's like socioeconomically, they're, they're nearly identical. Um, and after Katrina, the Ninth Ward lost half its population. But Braddock, you know, lost 90% of its population. And 90% of our buildings are in a landfill too. So to anyone saying, well, why is an established successful chef using Kickstarter? It's well, it's because you know, you're attempting to open a, a, a restaurant in, in a community where you're not able to secure bank financing. We're an economic outlier, circumstantially, among economic outliers. And that's what people need to understand. I grew up in a neighborhood that was very similar to Braddock, you know, both down on their lock, both formerly like affluent steel mill towns. And as soon as I like walked down the street, I was like, this feels like home. Mayor John here, I just want to welcome you all to Community Day 2013. Uh, free hot dogs and barbecue are up here with uh, Braddock's newest resident, Kevin Souza. Kevin has fully embraced the, the community. He's moved his family here. He has donated food at more than half a dozen events, Community Day being the most recent one. This is a sharp knife. It's going to be much more than just a fancy restaurant. There's going to be a lot of community outreach. You know, we're training people to cook and we're training people to be a part of the restaurant slash farming business. Yes, yes. There are a lot of people that I've already met here with the Braddock Youth Project that I want to work with, like young people that have like incredible work ethics and they're super passionate about Braddock and food and farming. The restaurant that we're working on down here, it's, you know, we want it to be community driven and we also want it to be the kind of project that like, you know, makes people from outside of Braddock want to come in and see what's going on down here. That would here. be the first one there to eat your project. Some <laughs> the building was one of the first Chevrolet dealerships in the United States. At one point it was called Superior Motors and we're going to keep that name so the restaurant is going to be on the ground level and then we'll have access to a thousand square foot greenhouse which is on the roof the hostel where a lot of our employees will likely be housed is directly next door and then the Grow Pittsburgh farms which will produce 85 percent of the, the produce are half a block away living here walking down the street to the restaurant knowing exactly what produce is there I don't have to call anyone and find out I can walk through and see like oh what's great today we have our, our apiary, we have chickens, we have a bread oven right, right next door. And I think one of the most interesting facets of all, we've got the first steel mill, you know, for Andrew Carnegie directly across the street. I just would challenge any restaurant to, to come up with that level of drama. All the people that are investing themselves in this community are inspiring. And hopefully I'm one of those people for someone. Or hopefully what we're doing inspires more people to come down and at least see Braddock. One restaurant can't change Pittsburgh, but one restaurant out here, particularly one as unique as this one, could really do a lot to bring Braddock back. We don't have a safety net. There is no plan B. The only way this project happens is with the help of the Kickstarter community. So that was a year ago. Um, a little, not quite a year ago. That was, uh, we launched that Kickstarter campaign in December, and you know, quite frankly, this sounds terrible for me to say, but I want to give me money when I watch that. You know, <laughs> I mean, and, and and I think that that shows you the power of 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 crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. Um, you know, it was something that I wasn't familiar with. It was not. You know, and I was one of those skeptics. I, you know, I would I would see these people on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. You know. In my mind, it was like they're begging for money, and I didn't get it. I didn't understand why, you know, successful people were going to this, this venue to to seek financing. And when I was introduced to John, and I and I started to really understand what was happening or what wasn't happening in Braddock, I, um, you know, we approached banks, and I, I mean, you know, 
understand that I had a reputation in Pittsburgh. I have a reputation in Pittsburgh of you know delivering um, you know good restaurants and that are that are fiscally sound and profitable. Um, and banks would not even talk to us. They 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 said you're out of your mind. You have no idea what you're doing. It, it's just not a smart move. And um, and I and we wouldn't accept that. And so. The next step was go to independent um, investors, and again, you know, people just—I don't know if they—they they don't have the vision or they don't have the faith, um, and and so we ended up at Kickstarter. And um, John and I, you know, we spent two weeks writing the text and and feeling and getting an idea of what we wanted the video to represent and how we wanted it to. Um, be delivered, and we, we felt like you know tugging on on heartstrings and and really expressing the the dire nature of communities, not just Braddock, but just communities across the Rust Belt um, that are down on their luck and not given the same um, you know the respect that they deserve. I mean, these are communities that built this country. Uh, you know, at one point there were seven steel mills in Braddock and. You know the steel in the Empire State Building. This, you know, steel that built bridges all over this country came from that town. And to see where where it is, it's you know, I get choked up to think about it. It's um, I, I just think that it deserves a shot. And so, you know. Yeah. Well, I love this quote you had that you said, "For the first time in my career, I have the opportunity to breathe life into a restaurant that is not chasing trends, but a restaurant that has no choice other than to represent a place and time." by producing food representative of its past, present, and future. Yeah, I think that says it all. You know, I, I mean, I, like many other chefs, um, you know, whether or not they admit it or not um, remains to be seen. But, you know, I wanted, when I started my career and I got my first chef gig, I wanted to be a famous chef and I wanted all the accolades and I wanted to have as many restaurants as I felt like I could handle. And through this process of, trying to do this project in Braddock, um, my whole paradigm shifted. And, and the way that I look at the world and the way that I look at the restaurant business has changed. You know, I sold Salt of the Earth the day that um, we got word that we, got our, we hit our goal. Uh, right now I'm working on, um, sorry, I get really emotional. Uh, Real. I'm, I'm working on uh, transferring ownership of the other two restaurants to the staff that have been doing the work in those restaurants, you know, the, the general manager and the chef of those restaurants, they're, they're going to have, um, you know, 100% ownership of these places. Uh, some of that effort is selfish. You know, I want to be able to focus on Braddock, but I also want to pay back the people that helped me get to where I am now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, and all Kickstarter projects aren't as, you know, life-changing as this one. You know, if, if I, I imagine that, you know, some of the guys and gals out there that uh, are selling iPhone cases don't feel the same way about Kickstarter as I do, but you know, it really like it opened up um, you know a depth of opportunities that that I don't think a lot of people understand. You know, that crowdfunding has really changed the financial world, and um, you know, I'm, I feel very strongly that if banks and traditional financing uh, institutions don't do something, they're going to get left behind. You know. So how did you decide to, to set your goal at that level and come up with the different, the different um, prices that people can the support reward. the yeah. reward? Uh, that's a good question. That was the hardest one that we had to answer. You know, we felt like we put together a really great campaign. We put, we, you know, John is a, is a wordsmith and I feel like we, we really, we had it right and then the last thing that we were going back and forth on for days was like, what do we set this goal at? And you know, prior to us, I think the highest goal for a project like this was like $75,000. And we were like, that's not gonna get us started. No, no bank is gonna talk to us when we put $75,000 on a table. We need to set it higher. And you know, we were really close to setting it at $100,000. And then we were like, you know what? We're still gonna have to start over if we get $100,000. That's not even enough. So we set it at 250, and we swung for the fences. And you know, quite frankly, the story of how the trajectory of the campaign was—it was the most nerve-wracking, you know, 60 days of, of my life. No, 30 days of my life. So we launched it December 6th. 
Um, the first two weeks were great. And so, so let me backtrack a little bit. The reason we launched it's December 6th, um, a serendipity would have it, this movie that was filmed in Braddock 100%. Uh, it was a Christian Bale movie. It came out about a year ago. It was called uh, Out of the Furnace. Um, it you guys was, get it now, right? It was being released. <laughs> it, it was being released December fifth. So we were like, you know, it might give us the it might grant us the opportunity to get a little bit of media attention on this thing. So and it did, and uh, so we we got a little bit of like local media play early on, and um, the first two weeks were great. We were hitting you know our our incremental goals, uh, and then the holidays hit, and we had not planned for that. You know, we we should have. In hindsight, uh, I don't know how we couldn't think that the holidays would, you know, uh, bring about this doldrums of funding. But we were uh, holding steady at about 125,000 through uh, December, like late December, third week of December, and then we just started to plan for the worst. You know, we uh, hosted a party, uh, put it out there to all the Kickstarter contributors that, um, you know, hey, it's not looking so good. Why don't you guys all come down? We'd like to thank you for your support and. <coughs> maybe you know have kind of a brainstorming session like how we're going to regroup and, and and really make this project happen uh that was on a sunday i think it was uh january 3rd or 4th and uh throughout the course of that four hour party um something happened uh local media got a hold of it all the local channels showed up um and then this groundswell of support um, so in that four hours, we raised forty thousand dollars. By the end of that night, we were at two hundred and forty-nine thousand um, dollars. The the campaign ended on that Monday. So at midnight, we were at two hundred and forty-nine thousand. We hit our goal at two fifty at five a.m. on that Monday, and we had another sixteen hours. And by the end of that day, we raised three hundred ten thousand dollars. And you know, and it, it's you know, I get chills talking about it. It's one of these stories where you can't explain it. And I've had hundreds of other Kickstarter um, hopefuls asked me what the, the, the secret was. What did you guys do? And you know, I think the answer just is we had a good idea. Um, we believe in it still. And you know, the whole time we never we never faltered. We never said this isn't going to happen. Whether or not the Kickstarter thing happened, this project was happening. And I think people sensed that and um, and they helped us deliver. You know, we had 2,026 uh, backers, which again is a record for a restaurant uh, project. Uh, they ranged from one dollar to ten thousand dollars in donations. The ten thousand dollar donations came after we had already hit our goal. And uh, you know, just to you know, kind of emphasize the drama of that day, um, the mayor, the the new mayor of Pittsburgh was being uh, his inauguration party was that night. Um, and I was a supporter, and so we, my wife and I were invited to the big inaugural gala. It was, you know, 5,000 people. He texted me, the mayor, the new mayor, texted me, said, Kevin, uh, thanks for stealing my thunder today. And uh, <laughs> so we're at the party, and, you know, my phone was constantly, you know, I get a text every time we got a donation, and I got a donation from a name that looked semi-familiar, and it was, uh, the last name was Bale, and I guess it was Christian Bale's wife. And they donated ten thousand dollars. And uh, you know, after the fact, I found out that he just fell in love with Braddock when he was filming. Uh, he filmed *The Dark Knight* there, and he filmed um, uh, *Out of the Furnace* there. And it was just—it's just one of these places um, that kind of gets into your gets into your blood. So that was that was our story of it's amazing. Yeah, how we made it happen. So. It's really amazing. And when I say we made it happen, I mean like the tri-state community of Pittsburgh. It wasn't any, I mean, it, it took on a life of its own that, that I, I, would, I could only wish other people would be blessed with those, those same kinds of supporters because it was, it was really something special.